Hello, this is a JVC GX78 camera that a viewer very kindly sent to me. The Vidicon camera. I'm not sure whether it works or not. There's no cable for it, but the camera end is this DIN socket. And it sent me the plug. It's not a cable, it's just a, a connector for that. So I could probably make up a cable if the camera works. I've looked online, but I've not really been able to find much information about this model. I've not found any schematics or service manual or anything or anything on what the pin configuration of this socket is so the first thing to do is to try and work that out I should be able to work out the 12 volt and earth by looking inside and buzzing it with the meter then I can use the scope on the other pins to look for a video signal and then audio on control and we should get an idea of the state of the camera fairly soon the first thing to do is to open it up it's usually quite easy to get into these cameras. Usually you just take the side panels off and the boards hinge out. Screws a bit stripped. Tighten this side. This screw's stripped, it's edge stripped, and it's cross threaded. So it'd be quite difficult to get out that. See if I can get it out with pliers. I'm struggling to get this screw out so I think I might have to get maybe some mould grips on it but I ain't got any so I'm going to have to borrow some um, but I'll leave that for now what I have spotted is this nice not looking very good health it's a surface mount tantalum chip capacitor it's uh, blown its top off so I'm wondering if maybe Power's been applied uh, with reverse polarity at some point. Someone's obviously been inside this camera and tried to fix it. Um, that would be the first thing to do anyway is to, to replace this before I try turning it on. Right, I've got these mole grips. I should be able to get it out provided there's enough room to get hold of it and turn it. damaged that transistor I 
Let's turn it. Like that. I'm concerned about the state of this transistor. Um, a little bit of, yeah, that, is that? I think that's the, yeah. That's one of the leads, that's, that's had it, I think, that transistor. I have got some surface mount transistors, so hopefully I can replace it. <laughs> Let's see if I can find out what it was. I don't know whether it were an MPN or a PMP. Sure, might be a sure. I would have thought it'd be open if it. If I would. And do that same. It might just be something else I'm measuring. Look like measuring it them ways. Seems like it might be all right. Surprisingly enough. Right now we've got that open. Now we'll look inside. I think that'll be the, the process, and then that's probably the encoder down there. And then this side will be the uh, like the sink and uh, deflection. Yeah, you can see uh, that's focus. And uh, that'll be like the high voltage and uh, the sink generator will be inside there ah so straight away that you can see that there's no uh, fuse in here so that that's another thing is to replace that fuse 800 milliamps you can see it down there replace that capacitor and that fuse and then see where we are That came off quite easily. Now one thing you've got to be careful of with these is the fact that the markings on them are the opposite way round to what they are on like an aluminium electrolytic. The the one with the band is the positive. Right, so now the next thing to do is to try and work out which are the power connections on, on this uh, connector. And I think that that fuse holder that we saw, I think there's a pretty good chance that that's on the, the unregulated 12 volt input. So use the meter to see if it's got continuity to any of these pins. I'll pop a thing on each side of this, because I'm not sure which uh, which ends which. I'm not sure whether this wire is thick enough to be honest. But I don't think it is. Yeah. 
There we are. So I'll draw out the connector. This is looking into it. And see all that. That's 12 volts. So we can connect power supply to that. I want I put fuels in first, and then uh, try the other pins on the scope. See if we can find a video signal. Right, I've got a fuse. It's an 800 milliamp slow blow type. Connect it up now. Let's see what happens. It's drawing half an amp. You'll find us on. Oh, there's a picture. Yeah, you can see that. That picture. It's a bit wobbly. I'm holding it with my hand, so my hand's a bit shaky. I'm trying to hold it still. But you see, there's definitely a picture, so it's functioning. So, the next thing to do then is to check them other pins to see which one's got the video signal on it then we can connect it up to a tally and uh, see what sort of picture it is you know see what colours like and stuff ok so we'll just try different pins on this connector and see which one's the video Couple with that on. Ah, it is. That's the video. Okay, so the next thing to try and find is the control signal, and that should be a DC voltage. So put that on the DC coupling. And you need to press, try pressing uh, record. Some of them don't seem to be connected to anything. Is that the same as that? That's a bit different. Ah, there we are. It's that one. Okay, so the next thing to find is the audio. So I'll connect this microphone up. I'll have to kind of tap the microphone or something just to get some kind of noise to come through. Increase it, actually. That looks like that's the audio. So they're the main signals, and then um, if we find the other pins that are also ground because there'll be multiple, and we can do that with the multimeter again. 
Uh, we've got a meter on continuity mode, so I'll just test other pins because there should be multiple earths. So there, uh, so I don't know what these other pins are. We've got one, two, three, four, five unidentified pins. Right, so I'm just having a look at this connector and there are some that are not connected to anything. There's only two pins now that are unidentified. Okay, so we're gonna try it on the TV now. I've uh, wired the socket up with some jumpers uh, some like crocodile clip leads and connected it up to the video socket of that TV and to the power supply. Alright, well, my telly seems to have started playing up. That camera was set up and it toppled over and the telly went like that. So I think something must have shorted to summit and it's zapped summit in the telly. So that'll be something else to look at. But fortunately I've got another telly that I can use for now. Then I'll have to come back to that one and try and get it going again. Uh, I've got the backup telly set up. It's this Itachi one. I usually use it as a monitor for my BBC Micro. Oh. Switch it on. That's a decent picture. A bit of green around the edge there, a bit there. Other than that, it's not too bad. I think that colour is uh, some 15. 20. An outdoor set white bulbs. I don't really make it look better that bit back to standard. That's better. I think it was getting a bit overloaded with too much light. I think that uh, it's on auto light, it's on manual iris. It's not bad. So it might be worth putting a, a cable together for it. Well, the next thing to do now, put this camera back together and see if I can find a screw to replace that, uh, that stripped one. Right, I'm going to put the camera back together now. The screws with the stripped heads, I've cut a slot into them with an axaw so I can use a flat blade screwdriver on them. I've also attempted to correct that cross thread. I'm not sure how well it's worked but I'll give it a try and see how it goes. Might still struggle to get that out.
Well, that's it for this video. My next job's to see if I can repair that Philips Tally. I think when the camera fell over, it must have connected some voltage to the input and it's blown the input. Hopefully, whatever's failed can be replaced. Possibly a subject for another video. I'll see. Anyway, bye for now.